Now here's a documentary I did a long time ago. I've been wanting to redo for a while now about the late Static Major. I wanted to redo it because the first one was, it was short, but this time we're going to get deeper about his life because this man gave Aaliyah her sound along with Timberland and Missy, but Static is, he is responsible for her sound before she passed. You know, Static Major was part of an R&B group called Player. Who remembers the group Player with that song, Cheers to You? That was my joint right there, man. It was Static Major, Smoking Black. And look, they were all lead singers, very underrated, and they all came from the church. But Static Major was the best kept secret in the music industry. He was the one, look, he was one of the most prolific Grammy Award winning singers and songwriters to do it. Plus, he was a rapper and producer. Some people call him the R&B version of Lil Wayne. And even Lil Wayne said that Static was one of the most talented individuals he's come across. Devontae Swing from Jodeci says Static just, he had a certain swag with him. And you can always tell when somebody has it. He had that it factor. Now, what's amazing is they say he didn't even use no pen or paper when it came to writing songs. Just how some of these rappers like Jay-Z and Biggie and Lil Wayne and all them be saying and claiming. They say Static would go right in the booth, sing right off the top of his brain. Wow. Didn't even write no lyrics, y'all. That's a gift from God right there. He was a family man who loved his wife and kids. He adopted and raised his sister's daughter too after she passed. Static would rather stay home and watch kung fu movies, pro wrestling, and just spend time with his family. He never wanted to be a celebrity like that. He didn't even like singing like that or being in the spotlight. He just, he just knew he had a gift. And a lot of new artists today, in the game today, they still pay homage to him. Drake pays homage. Chris Brown pays homage and samples his music. Bryson Tiller, he's from the hometown. But, you know, his story is just so sad. So tragic, man. The way he went out in this world at the age of only 33 years old. He passed away by the hands of something he feared for years. And it came true. Let's get into his story, right? Now, Stephen Garrett, better known as Static Major, was born November 11th, 1974 in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, ever since he was born, he was surrounded by music because his father was a musician. His mother was the choir director at their church. And his older sister, she played the piano. And around the age of three years old, he started singing in church. And ever since then, he wanted to be an entertainer. He wanted to be a singer. And it was at that same age, at three years old, that he also sung for the first time on a local TV station in his hometown. Now, by the time he hit his early teens, a lot of people remember Static in class always rapping and singing and making beats on his desk. They say he was just... He was just a cool guy, funny and a ladies man. And a lot of people didn't even know he could sing because being from the hood, he would never show his skills like that. They knew him for rapping, but he still would sing. And him and some of his friends, they had formed a gospel singing group and they would go against other local singing groups in that area. Like, you know, some of those groups he would go against and had competition with would later be the members and his future group player. It was black and smoking them. And it was very popular in the city at that time. But we'll get to that a little bit later right now. By the age of 16 years old, tragedy struck when his only sister ended up dying from heart failure at the age of 22 years old. She needed like a heart and a lung transplant. And, you know, when she passed, Static blamed the hospital for a death and he had his reasons why he blamed him. He had his reasons. You know, they say he sung the song It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday by Boys the Men at her funeral. Now, after his sister had passed, 
Static, you know, he took her death real hard. He had a hard time dealing with it. And he started getting in trouble in school, which led to him getting sent to a program called Burger King Academy, which was a program for underprivileged kids who got into trouble, but they were very talented and artistic. And, you know, being in that program, though, would change his life, though, because the school saw how talented he was and they asked him to sing the national anthem. And when he did that, he ended up winning a full scholarship to the University of Louisville. He was only like 17 years old when he hit college. Wow. And how he came up with the name Static Major, he said he wanted to bring Static to the industry and added the major to it just to be different from other artists who had the name Static. He had heard some rapper say, some, say something rhyme with the word Static and whatever. So he just took that name because he wanted to bring Static to the industry. Now, after graduating high school around 1991, Smoking Black, they had formed a group called A Touch of Class, and they ended up meeting Devontae Swing from Jodeci at a concert in their hometown in Kentucky, right? In Louisville, Kentucky. And they sung for Devontae, and he was impressed, and he promised to sign them once he got his label going, and once he finished his tour with Jodeci. After that, the group Touch of Class they kept doing their thing in the city, doing talent shows and stuff, but they ended up losing a member. And that's when Smoke ended up running into Static Major at the University of Louisville and asked him to be down with the group A Touch of Class. After that, Devontae, Devontae Swing, he kept his promise and he started his production company called Swing Mob Records. And he got in contact with Smoke because he really was trying to put Smoke and two groups he was working with at the time, which was H-Town and Intro. If y'all remember those groups, I know y'all remember H-Town, but Intro was a good group too. He was trying to put Smoke into those groups. But Smoke told Devontae he was already in a group and he wanted him to hear his new member in the group, which was Static Major. And when Devontae heard him, he loved Static's voice and what he brought to the group and he signed them to the Swing Mob label and the Basement Crew. And you know, Devontae, he loved them though, man. He took a special interest in the group because they all came from the church, just like Jodeci did. Now down with Devontae and the Swing Mob and the Basement Crew, right? They ended up moving to Devontae's house in New Jersey. And you know what's crazy? Just hours before they got there, Devontae had been robbed for $20,000 in cash. They took his jewelry, split his head open. Uh, they tied him up and everything. They said Devontae had to, bite, had to bite one of the robber's fingers off to escape. Wow, I remember that too. And he got robbed. But anyway, they go to New Jersey, to Devontae house. And then Devontae, he, he moved them to Rochester, New York to begin working on some music. And at the time, he had also signed some other up-and-coming artists to the Basement Crew, which included the group Sugar, which Tweet was part of, the group Sister, which Missy Elliott was part of, Genuine was there, Timberland and Magoo was there, Stevie J was there too, and some others. Now, Stevie J was actually signed to Dalvin's company called Clown and Records. He rolled with Dalvin. But once Static, Black, and Smoke got there, Devontae, he changed their name from a touch of class to Little Players. And they all became like family, collaborating every day and coming up with ideas because Devontae used to keep them just stuck in the house doing music all day. He didn't allow them to listen to the radio or any kind of popular music, which forced them to be original. They was using them Timberland beats at that time. And they all just went to work. They helped Jodeci. You know, they was helping with the production of Jodeci's the show, the After Party, the Hotel album in 1995, which ended up going certified platinum. They was, they all put in work. And you know, they say Static and Timberland had did a lot of work on those albums too. Now, Devontae said in an interview that he really thought out of everybody he had signed to the label that Static 
was the most talented because he could rap and sing. That's why Static got to be featured on a song called True OG with Dalvin. And he was on a song called Gin and Juice, which ended up being on a Dangerous Mind movie soundtrack that ended up going triple platinum. I mean, it went triple platinum due mainly to the Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio and LV, but that still was a good look for him, though. But on that Gin and Juice remix, Static, he was rapping on that. He was rapping some bars with Timberland and Magoo on there. Now, after that, by 1996, everybody ended up leaving Devontae's Swing Mob company because he was just too busy to work with them. He was never there at the house or nothing. He was always torn and gone. He just left them at the house. It's crazy because they had so much music they recorded together, though. Everybody had albums and they said songs were just sitting over there. They said it was like the school of Motown over there. But Devontae was just too busy to focus on all that million dollar talent he had signed, though. I mean, Miss the group's sister, Missy Elliott's group, they did put out an album called For All the Sisters Around the World, but it really didn't make it big on the charts or anything. You know, Static and his group, Little Players, they did record an album, but it was never released. All of them had albums done, but never got the chance to shine like that. Plus, a lot of them, like Missy and Timberland, felt Devontae was just using them for their music and not giving them credit. And he was horrible to them, which forced everybody to leave. <laughs> Stevie J said in an interview that Devontae was smacking his artists and producers up and everything, man. You know, I read Timberland's book called The Emperor of Sound. And he admitted that Devontae treated everybody pretty bad. They had nothing to eat, you know, no soap to wash up. He would hit them for no reason. I mean, they said it was bad over there. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. You know, that was around the time he was being managed by Suge Knight, too, I think. Yeah, I think he was being managed by Suge Knight. But anyway, Missy left, became a star. Timberland ended up becoming a super producer. Tweet went on to do her thing. Genuine ended up becoming a great R&B artist star too. Now, as far as Static and his group, Little Players, they stayed a little bit longer with Devontae after everybody had left. And they started songwriting and producing for other artists and continued to work with Devontae. But when Genuine left, he ended up getting a deal. Him and Timberland, they got a deal with Timberland got him the deal when he played the song. Got him a solo deal through Epic Records after they heard the song Pony, which Static, Timberland, and Genuine had did two years before, but Devontae would never put it out to the world. And you know, you know, Pony hit number one on the Billboard charts, man. Two weeks and hit number six on the Billboard Hot 100 and was certified platinum and helped push that Genuine The Bachelor album to double platinum. Static also won an ASCAP award for that song. You know, later on, Static and Genuine, they kind of fell out because, you know, they say Genuine wasn't trying to give Static credit for writing that song, Pony. But anyway, so after that, right, Static and his group, the little players, ended up leaving Devontae. They was the last ones to leave Devontae. So look, they ended up meeting Joe Mo Hankerson, who was the cousin of Aaliyah and the son of Barry Hankerson, which was Aaliyah's uncle that ran Black Ground Records, the label Aaliyah was signed to. Static and Player, they signed to Black Ground Records just for the management because at the time, Black Ground, they was dealing with Missy and Timberland who had helped Aaliyah with her One in a Million album that went double platinum at that time. So, now with Black Ground Management, right, they got a record deal and signed with Def Jam. Def Jam sold, and they also changed their name to Just Player. And on March 24th, 1998, they released their debut and only album titled Cheers to You. You know, the first single titled Don't Stop the Music, that was dope to me, man. That Timberland production was dope. But the second single, the song Cheers to You, that was a problem. That was that was pretty big. That was the joint right there, too. And that song ended up hitting number three on the Billboard R&B hip-hop chart and made history 
by becoming the most requested video on BET at that time. Wow, that's a big accomplishment right there. On that album, they did do a song with Aaliyah called One Man Woman. You know what song I like on that Cheers to You album? All the way. It's like the first song after the intro. That song was dope. That album was dope, though. The album was good to me. But overall, the album was a failure as far as Def Jam was concerned because it didn't sell. Plus, they felt, you know, player. They felt Def Jam didn't understand them because they wanted them to dress up in suits and ties like traditional R&B artists. And they had other writers doing all that stuff, trying to write on there. You know, and Player, they wanted to wear more stuff like Jodeci, how they came in the game. They was at that kind of R&B thugged out singers type stuff. And, you know, Def Jam, they couldn't see eye to eye with Def Jam. And Def Jam ended up shelving their next album. And that's when they all just focus on just songwriting and producing for other artists. And you know what? Static, he wanted to focus on that anyway. Because he really, he really never wanted to be in the spotlight like that. And by him studying under Devante, he knew you get the most money by songwriting. He also knew how to make beats too. A lot of people don't know that. Static could make beats, but he just felt that it was just too much time consuming. Now, after that, Static worked with Timberland Magoo, and they were signed to Black Ground Records too for their debut album. He worked on that album, Welcome to Our World, which was certified platinum. He worked on the song, the single they had, Love to Love You. And he also did a lot of music with Aaliyah. Because see, around that time, Aaliyah was on fire. She was the hottest thing in the industry and getting offers left and right. Everybody wanted a piece of her. Black Ground Records, you know what? They needed Aaliyah to do a song for Eddie Murphy's new movie called Dr. Doolittle, right? But they only had one day to turn the song in because really, Missy Elliott was supposed to write it, but she was just so busy at that time and they had to turn that song in the next day. And that's when they brought in Static. They called Static Major and he wrote the song are you that somebody? And he and Aaliyah had it done and completed in three hours. Wow, that's crazy. Now, there were rumors that said Static and Aaliyah were dating. They were a couple at one point of time. When that song, when they had did that song, right? The song, Are You That Somebody, is actually to Aaliyah and about her. They just switched some of the words and the lyrics. Static wrote that song about her. Now, according to Static's mother in an interview, she said they were definitely an item and Aaliyah was crazy about them. And she also said that Static brought Aaliyah to her wedding, which was a big deal because around that time, Aaliyah's parents didn't let her really go places. Plus, they wanted to keep their relationship a secret from Aaliyah's uncle. Barry Hankerson but you know both Aaliyah and Static's parents knew they were a couple but here's another crazy thing though about that song they said Aaliyah didn't like the song at first wow until she heard it you know it became a smash but you know the song went on straight to number one on the charts got Aaliyah a Grammy Award nomination for best female R&B vocal performance pushing the Dr. Doolittle soundtrack to double platinum now another song on that soundtrack on that hope that dr doolittle soundtrack static wrote was genuine same og he wrote that too which was also on genuine's second album called 100 genuine but when static wrote the song called so anxious for genuine that took genuine straight to the top and helped push his album to double platinum sales he wrote that song too, So Anxious. That was a hit. After that, I guess Static and Aaliyah's relationship didn't work out, but they still remain good friends and just continue to work and keep it professional, you know? Because right after that, Static ended up meeting his future wife. He met his future wife, Avanti, and they ended up getting married and they had two kids together. And, you know, around that time, his name became so popular in the music industry, it was it was starting to get a buzz. 
His name was Buzzin. As one of the go-to people for songwriting, everybody was trying to work with Static at that time. You know, he helped write the nice and genuine song called You Owe Me. He did some writing for Nicole Ray. Well, him and Player did a lot of writing on Nicole Ray. He wrote for uh, Destiny's Child. He wrote Destiny's Child, number one hit, Say My Name. But I think Static was on the remix version of that. Him and Timberland did the remix version. He also did the backing vocals on Jay-Z's Change the Game song, which was on the Dynasty Rock La Familia album. Then he was called on again to work with Aaliyah for her debut feature film titled Romeo Must Die with Jet Li. And Static wrote the song Try Again, which hit number one on the Billboard charts. In the video won two MTV Video Music Awards, plus Aaliyah was nominated for a Best Female R&B Vocal Performance Grammy with that song. Static also wrote the song called Come Back in One Piece featuring DMX. That was my joint too. I like that song too. The following year, Static helped with Aaliyah's third and final self-titled album. Him and his group Player worked on her album in Australia when she was over there working on the Queen of the Damn movie. They were over there in Australia for like two months helping her with that album. Now, a lot of the songs he wrote for that album, him and Aaliyah actually did those back like in 1998, like two years prior. You know, Static wrote the songs, We Need a Resolution, More Than a Woman, which was number one over there in the UK, Rock the Boat, a few other songs on that album. Static, he wrote majority of the songs on that album. He wrote, he wrote most of the songs on that red album she had. But on August 25th, 2001, Aaliyah died in a plane crash after shooting her video, Rock the Boat, in the Bahamas. And you know, Static was devastated by her death too because Static had usually been at the video shoot with her, but this time he didn't go. When he got the message that she had died, he thought it was a joke until he called her family and they confirmed it and man he was hurt he was crying and he didn't even want to hear her songs on the radio no more because it was just too painful after that static continued to song write for all types of other artists man he wrote he wrote the lyrics for dr dre's artist truth hurts for her hit song called addictive which hit number one in the uk he was featured on david banner's song called crank it up he wrote the song called Can I Take You Home by Jamie Foxx. That was my joint right there, too. He did some writing for Pete Diddy on the song Tell Me featuring Christina Aguilera. He wrote a lot of songs for the group Pretty Ricky, like On the Hotline, which was certified platinum. He did the song called My Body, which was certified gold. And he also worked on Pleasure P's solo album. He worked with Brandy, JoJo, Sunshine Anderson and, and many more. And you know what's crazy, right? Static, with well, all of his success, would never go to parties and hang out with industry people. He was a family man and would rather spend all his time with his family. That's what's up, though. You know, he take his kids to the football games, date night with his wife. He hang out in his hood where he was from, let his friends drive his fancy cars, do stuff like that. He was a regular guy. That's the kind of person he was. He would rather chill with his family and friends than hang out with all those industry people. Plus, he was working on his debut solo album, too, called Supper Time, which was going to be on Black Ground Records, I believe. But even though he had a, he had a bunch of labels trying to sign him, though, Atlantic wanted to sign him and G-Unit wanted to sign him, too. But I guess he decided to sign with Black Ground Records because, you know, they was the ones that took him in and and you know they gave him the first million dollars he ever got and he was really working hard on this solo album man he had timberland on the production dr dre scott storch pharrell and a few others his album was getting ready to be crazy but then he got word that little wayne wanted to work with him for his album because at the time wayne had the whole album done the carter three was done but he was missing that pop hit crossover song he needed. And once they got together, 
they did the lollipop song which really was static song he had the hook and everything already done to the beat before he let Lil Wayne have it and once the song hit the airwaves lollipop became Lil Wayne and static majors most successful single to this day it hit number one on the billboard hot 100 selling over 9 million copies and won a grammy award for best rap song that single helped push Lil Wayne's album, The Carter Three, to selling over one million copies in its first week. Wow. And overall, the album sold eight million copies, won a Grammy for Best Rap Album, and its second single title, A Millie, won a Grammy for Best Rap Solo Performance. Wayne was getting money back then, man. And you know, after that, Static just kept working, man, because he had... He was so much in demand and he was just preparing for his solo album to drop. But on February 25th, 2008, Static Major died in the hospital from a medical procedure that went bad due to the hands of the doctors. Yeah, the doctors did it. Now, the story goes right now. See, when Static was at the Lil Wayne Lollipop video shoot in Las Vegas, right? He was battling a cold that he had about a week just before that video shoot. So, after shooting the video with Lil Wayne, he had to go to Atlanta. Even though he really didn't want to go because he wasn't feeling good, but he went anyway because he was going to do some music with Lil Easy e who was his label mate on Black Ground Records. And you know, Static had told Little Easy E that he wasn't feeling good. He was feeling dizzy and he wanted to go back to his hotel room, which made him concerned. So look, he went back to the hotel room and he took some medicine and hours later he, he started feeling dizzy again. And that's when he called his mom and his wife and told them he couldn't swallow and he was losing his voice. And he said every time he would swallow, it was coming out of his nose and that's when they told him to go to the hospital even though he hated hospitals because he felt you know hospitals kill people plus he felt the hospital killed his sister back in the day but at this point he had no choice because he felt so sick so look so he went to the hospital right in Atlanta and they told him he had acid reflux so look, when his wife picked him up days later from the Atlanta airport, she said he was in a wheelchair and both of his eyes were closed shut. And that scared her. Then they took him home to just rest up, right? And about 3 a.m. in the morning, she heard static choking. And that's when they rushed him to the hospital. Now in the hospital, they gave him some IV fluids and he started feeling better. And they ran some tests on him and determined he didn't have a stroke because they was thinking he might have had a stroke. But they said he had myasthenia gravis. So the definition of myasthenia gravis is a chronic autoimmune neuromuscular disease that causes weakness in the skeletal muscles that worsens after periods of activity. But it improves after periods of rest. And people with myasthenia gravis may experience the following symptoms. Now, they say weakness of the eye muscles, drooping of one or both eyelids, blurred or double vision, a change in facial expression, difficulty swallowing, shortness of breath, impaired speech, weakness in the arms, hands, fingers, legs, and neck. Plus, it may cause respiratory failure which requires immediate emergency medical care. So look, right, the doctors also recommended a procedure called plasmapheresis, which is like dialysis where they would insert a catheter in his neck and into his chest to filter his blood. Basically, the doctors wanted to take the blood out of his body, clean and filter it through a machine and then put it back in his body, right? But here's the crazy part. 
the procedure was scheduled for the next day but for some reason the doctor he rushed to do it that same day for some reason that doctor wanted to do the procedure that day now look now static he wasn't feeling them having to do the surgery on him like that and he he wasn't feeling the doctors messing with his arteries and stuff he was kind of worried because like i said earlier he had a great fear of hospitals and you know his sister had passed away from it and that's when he told his wife he wanted to see his kids before he had his surgery before this procedure and she went home and got him and when they came to see him you know static just started crying man she started crying and, you know his heart was his four-year-old daughter and she asked him and said why was he crying man this is sad right here man you know so you know he told everybody everything's gonna be all right so after his wife you know she signs the papers or whatever for the treatment and the doctors and the nurse tells her she has to leave the room so they can treat treat static but static's mom was going to stay and be there with him so the next thing you know right his wife she left the room but she said something just told her to go back in that room before she went home and when she went back in that room and saw static she said static was just looking at her like it would be the last time he would see her again like he just knew he was going to die or something and, and he was still crying a tear came right out of his eye man this is this is heartbreaking man this is terrible man so look so anyway she leaves and the doctors are working on him and when the doctor put the catheter line in his neck he did it improperly he blindly did it and didn't even use a scope or nothing to see what he was doing and he ended up puncturing his veins and blood started leaking all through his body internally mm, 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 mm. wow then the doctor leaves the doctor leaves and he leaves the hospital goes home i don't know what he did whatever he left the hospital like i said earlier the whole procedure was supposed to be done the next day anyway but for some reason he was in a rush to get it done that day like he had something to do so the doctor leaves and static tells the nurse yo this is hurting is it supposed to hurt like this he was in a lot of pain because he was in the hospital because he felt sick he wasn't in no pain the whole time now he's feeling all this pain and he's telling the nurse it's hurting and something is wrong with his organs because he can feel it and the nurse starts turning him side to side trying to make him feel comfortable or whatever so look the nurse calls the doctor because he was in so much pain the one that left she called the one that left the doctor that left and went home or whatever and she tells the doctor what's going on with static and the doctor tells her to pull the catheter out and once she did that it was over it was over when she pulled that line from Static's neck, he began losing consciousness. And after she pulled it all the way out, he had passed out and would not regain consciousness again. Man, wow. When she pulled it out, every time he would take a breath right, blood would go into his lungs. She took it out wrong and didn't even know what she was doing. She started panicking herself crazy man so static look static's mom had to run in the hall screaming for other doctors to come and save and help her son and that's when she called his wife crying and told her static had passed out and wouldn't wake up now static's wife avanti said when she got there she heard some loud grunts coming from statics as the doctors was working on him trying to resuscitate him for about an hour and a half but come to find out static was already dead static was dead and the doctors knew he was gone a long time ago but they look they was working on him to make the family feel better 
wow. His wife was in the room telling, you know, the family, look, the wife was in the room telling him to keep fighting, don't give up because we need you, this, that. She, look, she thought the grunts she heard coming from him meant he was still fighting for his life. The loud grunts they heard coming from him and making his body jump and jerk and stuff like that. They was just trying to protect themselves because they knew they messed up. The doctors knew they messed up. These people are sick, man. I'm telling you. They wanted everybody to believe that he died due to the complications from a medical condition. Plus, when his wife asked him what happened, how did he die? They couldn't give her an answer. Nobody said one word. They couldn't even tell her what had happened to him. That's when the rumors started coming out all on the blogs and, and he died possibly due to a brain aneurysm. Some reports said he overdosed. And then look, because late because the doctors at that hospital tried to cover themselves. And, and look, they told the family he died from a medical condition and there was no need for an autopsy. Wow. Now, here's the crazy part. The only way the family found out how static really died is when they did a private autopsy. His wife had hired a doctor to do a private autopsy on him. And the private medical examiner put on his autopsy that he died due to respiratory arrest after the removal of the catheter. And the medical examiner noted he complained about the pain once it was inserted, saying there was something wrong. Remember? Static said, yo, it's supposed to be hurting like this. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with my organs. He said that to the nurse. This is sad, man. You know, the private autopsy report stated the cause of death was due to medical complications associated with the catheter placement. And that's when Static's wife, she filed a malpractice lawsuit against the hospital, Baptist Hospital East, and the doctor in charge there. And look, in court, right, the doctor, he said the nurse didn't mention Static's complaints. He said, now, if the nurse would have told him about Static's complaints, he would have came back and removed the medical device himself rather than giving her the okay to carry out the procedure. He said he would not have left the hospital if he was aware of that concern. Wow. But you know, at the end of the day, it was their fault. And the lawsuit was settled in court. But you know, Static's wife stated that no amount of money was enough to correct the fact that her husband is gone. Sad, man. You know, at the funeral, man, they you know they buried they buried Static in a gold casket, too, man. He went out in style. But still, man, it's sad, man. You know, Static's wife, uh, she is now the owner of all of his music catalog. So, And she started a company called Major Styles Entertainment to manage everything related to Static's music rights. So I'm glad she's still keeping his legacy alive because they say he got hundreds of songs that never has been released they say over 1200 unreleased songs we have we haven't heard yet that's crazy you know she also created a non-profit organization called to save a life foundation and and she do a fundraiser every november for his birthday which is dope you know what's sad static's mother said in an interview that she watched both of her kids die in the hospital. Wow. I told you his sister died and now Static died in the hospital. And it's just crazy. He feared the hospital and his worst fear had came true. Mm, 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 mm. I thought I heard that Static's wife was working on a, um, a documentary too about his life. So hopefully we get to see that. And hopefully she put out a book too about him. That should be in the works, too. That'd be dope. You know, the other members of the group players, Smoke and Black, they still doing music and touring today. You know, they're keeping Static's name alive also. And they also joined forces with the group Drew Hill. So they touring with them and everything. So shout outs to all of them. In 2016, 
Bryson Tiller received a Static Major Award at the Kentucky Urban Entertainment Awards. You know, that they created that award for Static because he was the most successful hip-hop R&B star to come out of Louisville, Kentucky. You know what's crazy about the 25th of the month? A lot of stars have died. Michael Jackson died on June 25th, 2009. James Brown died on December 25th, 2006. Lisa Left Eye Lopez died on April 25th, 2002. Roger Troutman died on April 25th, 1999. Aaliyah died on August 25th. And now Static Major died on February 25th. Hmm. I don't know, y'all. It's crazy. But uh, Static was 33 years old, man. Young. Young, man. So much more to accomplish. 33 years old. Rest in peace, Static Major. 